Alright, thanks for watching. And on a previous video, I calculated the volume of an ice cream cone without using spherical coordinates. But just because it's so neat, I want to do the same problem, but with spherical coordinates. So let's find the volume. of the region, I guess, of the ice cream cone. Again, it's still summer, so it's okay. Cone between, literally the cone, z equals to square root of x squared plus y squared, and z equals to square root of a minus x squared plus y squared. And I drew the picture in a previous video, but just to remind you, so this, this is the cone part, that square root of x squared plus y squared, and this is, you know, the ice cream part. This is square root of 8 minus x squared plus y squared. And before I did it without spherical coordinates, which was completely fine, turns out it's a bit more complicated doing it without, and spherical coordinates simplify your life tremendously. Because first of all, there's no need to figure out what the bigger region is or the smaller region is. In terms of um, you know, triple integrals, what we know is that the volume is the triple integral of 1, if you want dx, dy, dz, in no particular order, of the cone, ice cream cone E, which is the whole solid region. And it turns out, in terms of spherical coordinates, this thing has a very nice, very easy and nice, you know, expression. First of all, we need to figure out three things. We need to figure out the radius rho. The, if you want the horizontal angle, I guess longitude or something, theta. And I think the zenith angle or the vertical angle, phi. First of all, the radius is not too hard to find. So rho. So rho, it's not an e, I know it did look similar, but rho is just a radius, it's just the distance between 0, 0, 0 and our point. And note in particular, rho goes from 0 to whatever this radius is, but the radius in this case is just square root of 8, because this just represents a sphere of radius square root of 8. So, on the one hand, we have that rho is between square root of 8, which is 2 square root of 2, and 0. Now, let's figure out what the horizontal angle is, which is really, you know, the way, um, the extent you have to turn horizontally to get the whole picture. And note in particular, here, if you want, that's the angle theta. Well, to wind down horizontally, you actually have to go all the way. In other words, if here it's your uh, cone, you really have to do a full 360 degree turn to get the whole cone. So, in this case, theta is just between 0 and 2 pi. And lastly, let's just figure out what the um, um, vertical angle is, like the extent you have to go this way to get the whole thing. So in other words, let's figure out this angle phi here. And here is where you have a restriction, because you can't have phi to be pi over 2, because that would mean that, you know, I guess your ice cream is dead, you know you really just have to go a little bit on the right-hand side to get your ice cream cone. And let's figure out how much you have to go. And for this, let's use the equation of the cone. 
So here we have zero, 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 zero. And here we have, if you want, square root of x squared plus y squared. And we have our angle phi here. Okay, and now, again, either you know the answer or let's figure this out. For example, suppose x equals to zero and y equals to one. You have the point zero, one, zero, for example. Then square root of x squared plus y squared, that's just one as well. So this becomes a point one. So in particular, what you have is that if you go one unit to the right, you have to go one unit up, which tells you that this angle has to be pi over four, and therefore this other angle, at most, has to be pi over four as well. That's just my quick derivation. So, in particular, this angle phi cannot go more than pi over four. So phi is between zero and pi over four. And here's the cool thing. This is all the info that we need. Our rho, theta, and phi, it don't depend anymore on other variables. And so in particular, this integral becomes a very nice integral with constant endpoints. So let's just simplify this. So volume, in this case, it's the triple integral of one. But now, let's do our d rho, d theta, d phi. Rho, we saw it's between 0 and 2 squared of 2. Theta, between 0 and 2 pi. And phi, between 0 and pi over 4. And remember, before in polar coordinates, we had r dr d theta. In this case, we need this weird thing, rho squared sine of phi. That's the, 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 um, the junk we get from using the Jacobian. And here's the nice thing, you know, this triple integral actually separates out into three simpler integrals because, first of all, do the rho part. Integral from two, 0 to 2 squared of 2, or rho squared, d rho. Integral, well, here's no theta, so integral from 0 to 2 pi, d theta. And integral from 0 to pi over 4, sine of phi, d phi. And even a you know, single variable calculus student can evaluate this integral now. So rho squared becomes one-third rho q, so one-third two squared of two q. Integral of one just becomes two pi. And sine of phi, I always have to think about this, so minus cosine of phi from zero to pi over four. Let's simplify this a little bit, so one-third times eight root 2 cubed, that is, I think, 2 root 2, okay. and then 2 pi, and then, so minus uh, cosine of phi, so um, I guess 1 minus square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and let's see how many factors do we have here. Um, so 16, 32 pi, Square root of 2 over 3, and then if you want, this becomes 2 minus square root of 2 over 2, and then it simplifies, so um, this 2's cancel out, and you get 16 pi square root of 2 over 3 times 2 minus square root of 2. Almost the answer I gave before, except I think you can just factor out the square root of 2. So 16 pi square root of 2 over 3 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 minus 1. And yes, that becomes 32 pi over 3 
square root of 2 minus 1. So what do you get in the end? It's an integral that's a bit harder to you know, set up, but once you set it up, it's actually much easier to evaluate because you just have the product of three single integrals. The other one, totally possible to evaluate, but I did it in lecture once and it took like 20 minutes to do so, but here it's much, much easier. And this is very typical of spherical coordinates. They're harder to think of, but once you think of them, you're in the game. All right, so if you like this multivariable extravaganza and want to see more math and more integrals, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.